In exchange for the three Cuban agents, Cuba today released one of the most important intelligence agents that the United States has ever had in Cuba and who has been imprisoned for nearly two decades. This man, whose sacrifice has been known to only a few, provided America with the information that allowed us to arrest the network of Cuban agents that included the men transferred to Cuba today. There is little debate about what has been the American stance on Cuba over the past 50 plus years. It simply hasn't worked, say many, has not accomplished what it was set out to do. But is President Obama's new plan any better, and how will it in the end affect our national security? He is the executive director of the National Security Network, a former foreign policy advisor to senators in the Foreign Relations Committee. It's a pleasure to welcome John Bradshaw into Midpoint. John, thank you so much for being here again. Great. Thanks for having me. John, here's the statement that you issued. President Obama's bold action in restoring relations with Cuba is more likely to lead to positive changes in the lives of the Cuban people than current policy. That is a statement right there that a lot of critics will immediately attack and they will say, there is no proof that the Cuban people's lives will get any better, that this was a, this was a regime that was ready to collapse and that America should quite frankly have let it collapse and continued along the line that they were on right now. So do me a favor if you will, let's dig into that. How is this going to make the Cuban people's lives better in your opinion? There are no guarantees that this is going to transform the lives of the Cuban people, but as you just read in that statement, I think it's more likely that we will see positive change under this new policy than sticking with what we've been doing for the last 50 years. It hasn't resulted in any improvement in human rights or any improvement for the Cuban people in terms of their economic lives. So with this opening, the fact that the Cuban people will have better access to information, to the internet, uh, more Americans will be there. There will be some opening of the society. I don't expect to see a transformation of Cuba into a democracy overnight. I think this is a very long process and we're just at the beginning of it. Let's talk about that at the beginning of the process because you certainly bring up what a lot of people have talked about, better access to information. I think last time I checked it's single digits of the percentage of people in Cuba that actually have access to the internet might only be two or three percent. This is still a very repressive regime. It is still a communist regime that holds its people down. Why should we believe that once America comes in, starts the new diplomatic relations, that Cuba will in any way allow its people access to the internet, access to the outside world, which would then make it more difficult for them? Well, they, they've said they will, will do it, but you're right that we sh I, I think we should remain skeptical about it. Uh, they are a very re repressive regime. I'm not going to defend the, the, the Cuban regime. I think it's an odious regime, um, has destroyed the economy there and has repressed the people. Uh, and we'd be happy to see the Castro regime go. And Raul actually says he's going to retire in 2018. We'll see if that happens. But there will then be a new generation. Uh, they will be more connected by information to the world. And I think we can have some hope that it will change. But I, I agree with you, there's no there's no guarantee that we're going to see a transformation in, in Cuba just because of increased information. If, if Internet access transformed uh, uh, countries to democracies, uh, it would have happened all over the world. And we know that there are a lot of places that are still uh, very repressive. Do we have any information, any intelligence, any idea that you mentioned a new generation? Obviously, Raul Castro is not going to live forever. Neither will Fidel Castro. But once they move on and die, what assurances do we have of any that a younger generation won't follow in their footsteps and won't simply be just part of the problem again and will actually look to free up Cuba? I think the, uh, well, you see in the, in the new generation of Cuban Americans, uh, who a lot of whom will be traveling to Cuba, there is uh, much more value placed on, on democracy and, and openness. That in itself will not transfer, uh, transform Cuba. Uh, you, you see, though, that the, the changes in attitudes uh, in this country have been very starkly divided by generations. Uh, in Florida, where a majority of the people, uh, inclu including the Cuban community, Cuban-American community, support lifting the embargo, there is one segment of the population that's very much against it, and that's uh, over 65. So those are, um, it is a really a generational divide. And I understand that a lot of the Cubans who had to flee Cuba, the exiles, still have uh, a, a lot of uh, bad memories and anger about that period, and it's, it's understandable. Um, 
It was interesting to see uh, Ambassador Reich uh, here, uh, being a, he's a Cuban American. He was my first boss when I was a Foreign Service officer in Venezuela, and he was the ambassador there. Well, let so me stop his, you there for uh, one second because we have to take yeah. a break. But you bring up some of the comments he made. Let's talk about that after the break again because he was very critical of this as well. Hang tight. John Bradshaw right. will return after a short break. We'll dig into what the new plan for Cuban relations means for Gitmo and all those human rights violations the Castro government is famous for.